So you got a message. You got a manner of communicating. All you need is a messenger, right? You're just waiting on whoever that is. Whether it's President Obama, whether it's Ronald Reagan, whether it's Abraham Lincoln, we're just waiting around on that great messenger, right? If you were waiting around for another Ronald Reagan or another Martin Luther King Jr. or another Abraham Lincoln, you are going to have a long, miserable wait. It's not going to happen. If you're waiting on a knight or knightess to ride in on a white horse and change whatever you think ails our country or your school or your community or your family, it's not going to happen. You know who the messenger is? It's you. It's not me. I don't know you. I don't know where you come from. I don't, have, I, don't, I don't know your friends. I don't hang out with you. I'm not going home with you for spring break. I'm not going to work with you this summer. I'm not in class with you. Neither are any of the other people that you may be thinking about that are going to do it. It's you. You're the messenger. You're the leader. I work in a town that is named for Washington. I fly into an airport named for Reagan. I pass monuments to Jefferson and Lincoln and King, and every street is named after somebody famous, and there are statues and portraits in every one of the office buildings. I don't even know. They're so famous, I don't even know them. Lots of famous people. And when you fly in on an airplane into Reagan, the pilot usually says you may want to look off to this side to see this monument, or you want to look here and see the Washington Monument or the White House. I don't lean forward for any of that. Not anymore. I've seen it. You know what I think about when I fly into Reagan? I think about a guy you've never heard of. You've never heard of him. I was about your age. I was exactly your age, watching television with my father. February, in the throes of a terribly frigid winter in Washington, and a plane crashes into the 14th Street Bridge. And all the passengers except a half dozen were killed on impact, and those half dozen were in the icy waters of the Potomac River. And I'm watching this on television with my dad. This is before 24-hour news, but it was captivating the country. So you got these people in the icy waters of the Potomac, and you got the whir of a helicopter coming. And that helicopter lowers a rope ladder into the waters of the Potomac, and it falls into the hands of a man you've never heard of before. If I called his name right now, you, you don't know him. So he has life in his hands, and he passes it to a stranger. And that person is hoisted to safety, and the helicopter takes her away, and it comes back, and the same scene repeats itself four more times. And every time, he's got his hands on a rope ladder. He is this close to saving his life. And every single time, he passes it to a stranger. Not his wife, not his daughter, not his best friend, a stranger. And when the helicopter came back for him, he had succumbed to fatigue and drowned. His name was Arlen Williams. I'm not asking you to be Reagan. I'm not asking you to be Lincoln. I'm just asking you to live a quiet life of conviction and virtue and actually live out what you profess to believe. And if you can do that, you'll be a leader, you'll be persuasive, 
And your generation will get this country headed back in the direction that you want it to be in. 